Greetings all, Last Outrider here with another special story for you. This time, I bring you Blood Angels with the Blade of Sanguinius. Commander Dante had suspected from the first that the Cryptian shield would fall. As a result, he had a sizable force assembled and ready when the distress call from Cryptus was received. Within days, a spearhead of blood angels and flesh terrors reached the Cryptus system, determined to wrest the Emperor's worlds from the grip of the hive mind. The Blade of Vengeance shuddered as it slipped back into real space, leaving the turbulence of the warp behind. In the wake of the massive Blood Angels battle barge, scores of smaller craft materialized in bursts of swirling crimson fire, as they too were disgorged along the extreme edges of the Cryptus system. Upon the command deck of the battle barge, Commander Dante stood, a golden god in shining sculpted ceramite. The journey through the warp had been nightmarish. Throughout the Space Marine fleet, navigators and astropaths lay dying in their dozens. It was a steep price to breach the psychic miasma thrown up by the Tyranid Hive Fleet. But one Dante was willing to pay if there was a chance Cryptus or its peoples could be saved. A reedy astropathic wail still lingered in the immaterium. It was this haunting cry for help that the fleet had followed to reach the besieged system. Yet the message gave no clue as to disposition of those still fighting, if, indeed, any still fought at all. As the Blood Angels and Flesh Terror's fleets assembled, their escorts and scout ships ranged ahead, picked thieves and vox echoes scrounging the void for data. According to the system-wide auger capture, the tendrils of High Fleet Leviathan had breached the outer system only five days ago and made planetfall upon all major worlds 24 standard hours later. From this information, Dante had hoped to find Imperial resistance still strong and resilient. What greeted his long-range scans was just the opposite. Descending to the massive hololith projector central to the blade's Tactica Arcanum, Dante considered the ghostly images taking shape within the swirling lenses. At his side were Captain Carlian of the Archangels and Chief Librarian Mephistion. Or Mephiston. The two chapter heroes gave counsel, pointing out the variations at the ebb and flow of the data shadows. The worlds of Cryptus drifted above the Hololith, circling like baleful crimson orbs of the system's twin stars. Tarotos hung closest to the stars. When Asphodex followed by Lysios with its massive moon, Ioxe? Ioxe? I'm not sure. It's spelled I-X-O-I. Pronounce it how you like. And then the gas giant, Arios. Until around the edges of the system, a vast, tumbling asteroid belt hung. Behind this was an indistinct world and another solar barrier. This one glittering softly in the dark. But it was not the edges of the system that Dante's gaze drifted. His attention was fixed upon the four innermost worlds, and the putrid stain upon the stars that enveloped them. It was a hive fleet of almost unimaginable size, 
easily over a million void-faring organisms. And who knew how many trillion weapon beasts already spewed forth onto the Kryptian planets. However, of more concern than the size of the Tyranid Armada, or that it choked the skies above every world, was the complete lack of Vox traffic. Even with the disturbing interference caused by such a large concentration of the hive mind, Dante would have expected to detect at least some Vox signals from the defenders. Could the system have fallen completely in just three days? Certainly the proximity of the largest bioships to the planets seemed to suggest the Leviathan had already begun to feed, gorging itself upon the vast wealth of biomatter the cryptus system offered. Then another icon flickered into being on the Hololith, and Dante observed a ragged line of ships making for the far side of the system an evacuation fleet. Judging from its size, however, it could hold no more than a tenth of the population of Cryptus. As he watched, he could see the tendrils of the Tyranid swarm following them out. Doubtless, most of the vessels lacked warp drives. Those that did had probably abandoned their comrades long ago, and so the evacuees were making for open space. Though the commander could not see what good it would do them, and without aid, there was little hope they would make it. Any lesser general of the Imperium would have looked upon the doom of the Cryptus system unfolding before them and regretfully turned their fleet back to the void, confident that there was nothing they could do to change its fate. For Dante, though, this thought never crossed his mind. Around the edges of the ghostly image of the Cryptus system hovered hundreds of star systems, and among these, one in particular drew Dante's eye. Baal, the glimmering red jewel, was a sister system to Cryptus, its closest neighbor and directly in the path of the cryptoid tendril. When the beast had devoured the worlds here, Baal would be the next, and with it, the Blood Angel's homeworld. This, Commander Dante, would not allow. How's that, people? So until next time, bye.